Okay, okay. so um, this is a, okay. the well, Sage Shrine, and right now we have uh, Nanami, she's a new partner um, of Chibi, and she's a little blue-haired mermaid. And you're trying to figure out a way to fit into the Sage Shrine. Um, inside the Sage Shrine is the Knowing Jewel, and the Knowing Jewel, jewel is going to tell you something about why darkness has taken over the land. Um, yeah. Yeah. So in Okami, then, there's three different weapon types. You have your um, solar discs or your uh, reflectors, and it's like a flaming shield. You have your swords. I'm going to equip that. It's the most powerful weapon in the game. You can hold down the Y button, and it'll do a charge attack. And then also you have the beads, which are fast and sort of just kind of a very long range attack. Um, so I'm going to head over in this direction. We'll see this um, shell here. And if I circle it, it'll bloom it open. And inside the shell is a lucky mallet. And that lucky mallet, um, in Japanese mythology, there's an oni or a demon that had a lucky mallet. And that demon would use that lucky mallet to kind of tease and torture kids because it's got, it's got some pretty interesting characteristics to it. Um, if you guys have seen Alice in Wonderland, it's like the eat me, drink me thing in Alice in Wonderland. So if you use to shake it a few times, it'll shrink people down. And if you shake it some more, um, it's actually going to make people get bigger. So, Nanami being the playful mermaid that she is, is going to have a little fun with Chibi here. And he gets pissed off and barks right. And so she calls him Squiddy. All the partners will have different nicknames. These are the children of gods. Um, they're not, uh, you know, full-fledged gods themselves. They have a lot of power, but they're not f quite sure how to use it. So they got to work together to figure out how to best use that power and be responsible about it. So now we're shrinking down here and we're going to go inside the stage shrine. Okay, so here's one of the new enemies in the game. It's called the Water Nymph. And you'll notice that in water form, if I attack with normal weapons, it's not going to do any damage. So what I have to do is I have to use the Gale Storm technique. I do a little loop on the screen, and that loop will kind of decimate all that water, and I can attack it normally. Now I'm going to use a bomb, a cherry bomb, and then I'm also going to use a, a power slash to kind of just blow it up. And you'll get the effective hit of both the bomb and the power slash. I remember you can move while you shoot. Yes, yes, this is the, the crazy nonsense. Here. So if I get sucked down in this whirlpool, you'll notice there's like a little cute little... Uh, in the full game, you'll be able to customize your character, uh, you know, your skills and traits, that type of thing. Um, today, we've got some of the Gale players. Stone, yeah. get rid of it again. I'll be browser and Chris as well. Two missions today, from Mario 4 and Mario 5. Uh, the full game, we've got over 30 different missions. Power Slash, and I've yeah. effectively yeah. killed it at this point. Yeah. So now you're rewarded with some rice balls, restore your health, ink pots, restore your ink, and then some money, which also you can use later in the game to buy upgrades and weapons and things like that. Yeah, the computer is, uh, to shoot. Do my little happy spin dance that one. Remember Nintendo Y, not Xbox Y. Um, if you manage to get through it without tapping X, that would be pretty good. Yes, they're two different pictures. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to jump down into this whirlpool here. And so uh, now I'm actually in an area with the dry jewel, and I can breathe underwater thanks to it. But if you notice, outside of the side-scrolling view, so it's kind of like a sh shoot 'em up game, and uh, I can definitely, um, you know, 
You've got the if I if I don't to touch it, it's going to move by itself. So I have to just navigate through these obstacles. So you can still use your celestial brush while you're playing, and you can use that to take out enemies, and you can use that to take out rocks and sort of things in your way. Um, you'll notice that uh, a lot of these enemies look very unique, and that's true because this is just unique to the world of Okami Den. It's also unique in the game that these are the only time you're really going to see these enemies. Um, this guy here, he's just sort of like an obstacle. Um, you're not going to be able to kill him. That looks a little more natural, but this also... Yep, absolutely. It's the top right of your inventory system there. Um, of the, of the six buttons over there on the left. Oh, oh, oh the canister also sounds... I know. Yeah, it automatically goes to this. It's best to kind of keep your sword charged up as you move go, through this the level, because then you can take out enemies time. really quickly, uh, the goal of this and they're not going to hurt you. Zombies, so, so there's going to be little uh, treasure chests along the way that'll kind of be like little cookie kills. crumbs that I'm going to be tempted to go points. get. Um, and that's the purpose of that is to try and, you, you know, trap you somewhere. Like I said, uh, Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5 maps with a bunch of um, added remixes. Things like RE5 bosses appearing in RE4 maps, uh, vice versa. Uh, if you've played those Mercenaries modes, there's, it's going to be familiar to you, but everything's in the remix. The, uh, time bonuses are in different places, etc. Pretty much, if, it, if you can do it in RE4 and RE5, you can do it in this. That's online co-op, that's graphics, gameplay, controls, everything like that. It's a red barrel, it's a video game, therefore it explodes. We want to change that. That flash grenade doesn't kill. So here's a tricky treasure chest to get. If I get it, I'm going to collect one of Isim's masterpieces. And you can collect pieces of Isim's paintings throughout the land. And uh, you'll get a reward at the end if you collect all of them. Here is a um, new brush technique called Magnetism. If I draw an upside down U, it's going to pull these apart. If I draw a right side up U, it would push things together. 8,000, not a bad score for your first try. You can try the other mission, try a different character. Um, we got lots to choose from. In the full game, you know, your score will determine things like you know, your skill unlocks, um, as well as how you progress through the game. It will be shared on an online leaderboard. Automatically uploaded? It's a little I quick fire, rapid fire section here. Um, but it's, it's, that's sort of the goal of the game, is to, um, to hit those high scores. So that's that's key. So you're saying there'll be 30 missions and... Oh, over 30 over missions, 30 missions. Um, way more than four characters. Uh, <laughs> I cannot say exactly how many, but consider them all. Uh, that's just the case. Um, and each mission, like I said, has its own objective. The two that were shown today, it's just kill a bunch of zombies as quickly as possible. Uh, but there'll be other more creative objectives too. Okay. So I'll just show you a taste of a different weapon here. So that's what the beads look like. So, were the assets reused directly poured over? Did they have you down sampled? Um, so, a lot of it, it's the MT framework engine. Uh, it's, it's a light. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, what we're you know, so that weapon's that a lot weaker. It didn't take out those enemies quite as quick. Were, you know, really brought to this platform. Um, obviously everything was remixed a little bit, remastered to fit on the 3DS, uh, but MT Framework works easily with 3D. Um, actually the PlayStation 3 version and the PC version has 3D options, um, so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, so I'm almost at the end here, and the we're going to run into one, instance, one of the boss battles. Very player Redfield and MT Framework on the map. So she was you know, completely brought from scratch. Uh, this is her first missionary experience. Tom from Krauser, um, RE4, you know, so they're brought up. Um, in terms of the exact, say, uh, resolution of the characters or um, you know, polygon count, uh, I can't speak directly to, but um, compared to the PS3, yeah, it's, it's, it's ported down. Right. But when you look at it in person, like, it's, a, 
It looks a lot like that. And you can customize all the weapons the final game? Um, yeah, there, there's customization options, uh, whether it's weapons or skills or traits or whatnot. Um, it's all there. So, do the characters right now have So, this is the Asteridian. It's sort of like this giant starfish. Now, I'm going to have to take him out. I can either just attack him normally, or I can put a big bomb in the water. And then I can basically power slash through that bomb. Actually, horizontally power slash through that bomb. And uh, you notice his tentacles turn red, and when they turn red, that means that you're doing damage to it and that it's weakened. Yeah, and you'll see he also has a spin attack, and to stop that spin attack, you can either run into something or it can use the wind. And that wind will sort of just stop him in his tracks. You can actually do two bombs at a time sometimes. To move and shoot at the same time. I know it's crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. Hold down both L and R. And that will allow you to. Uh, I try to figure out how to do this. Yeah. Uh, you cannot move, shoot, and aim at the same time. That's just silly. Uh, but you can move and shoot, which is new to the series. It's one of the ways that even if you played already. So now he's got all his tentacles missing, and he's going to really get a little PO'd, and he's going to attack me with this super powerful wave attack here. How, how effective are the arrows? Uh, it's a two shot kill. Um, it's a lot like. Uh, Shetler's arrows in RA5. Um, they're actually a little bit less powerful. Shetler's arrows have the power of the grenade um, in terms of damage output. Um, these have a little bit less So when he's damage. spinning, you want to try and use the wind to stop him? Headshot is one. If you hit him anywhere if you're else, hurt, you shot kill. Use if a you bone. really want to get into sort of some pro, resident evil mercenary tactics, shoot everyone in the knee, run yeah. up and punch him in the face. That will give you an extra five seconds. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the ways when you talk about this game, uh, it's got a lot of depth to it. People are going to play it and really try to maximize their score. There we go. Really so we've taken them out at this point. Really, um, and really as in most fights, you're going to be rewarded based on your time, your damage, yeah, and your time.